if I can see that on the just just double check, make sure everything's um is on is on Facebook. Yeah, looks good. Uh, we are live now. Yeah, great. Hello, everybody. Awesome. All right. Good uh, morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Um, we have Volodia back again with us to share some new work he has been done. And uh, apparently, he's um, uh, one advantage being an action photographer is that you, you, you do all those awesome sports meanwhile, and uh, you get all this. He developed this nice eight packs, which I can't wait to share with you guys <laughs> in the BTS videos. Um, without any further ado, uh, well, I'll leave the floor to him and uh, let him talk about his uh, those crazy and awesome images. Hello, Aris. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good day. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Today we will talk about uh, Godox flash, flashlights, yeah, and uh, photography with flashes. So yeah, uh, can we put uh, our presentation? Yeah, perfect. So yeah, let's get started. Why we use flashes in sports? Uh, I will show you here, like, um, today we will talk about Godox flashes, yeah, in action and extreme sports. So in nowadays, we use flashes already almost everywhere. Of course, the most often photography uh, genre where we're using uh, flashes are portraits and weddings. But more rare times uh, in animal and sports photography. In extreme sports, uh, there were times when those old school stylish photos were popular with on camera flash uh, were, was using but now uh, we have some serious toys so we can uh, create a lot more interesting light actually i can say that probably exactly in action sports and animal shootings uh, we use full potential of flash power because in those genres uh, there is an important need of light power and fast recharge time. And uh, all these technical aspects uh, when we use flash and its maximum power. Uh, so for example, if we're doing portrait shootings, we don't use full flash power often, especially when in, uh, it's uh, cloudy outside. Yeah? So uh, when there's no need to overpower the sun. But in action shootings, because in 90% times we're using high-speed sync mode, uh, that absorbs power. There's a strong need to use flashes with full power. And uh, if we will also add some light shapers, like uh, like uh, soft boxes, yeah, huge. Uh, so they also absorb light. And uh, uh, if there will also be sun outside, uh, there's there will be an urgent need to use full power of the flash. About uh, high-speed sync mode, I already explained previously. Yeah, you can uh, watch video on the Godex channel. And uh, I just want to clarify that uh, all the content that I will show in future here, uh, I've done using high-speed sync mode. Yeah, so uh, while we're using flashes, uh, there are, of course, pros and cons. Uh, and the main advantage is, of course, of getting those qualitative final results. Uh, but disadvantages are about its weight and uh, carrying all equipment. I also already told it in previous uh, uh, previous streaming, yeah. So it's not a pocket equipment. So anyway, uh, you will need additional space to carry all the stuff. Moreover, uh, because of our needs in sports photography, you will carry powerful light. So it's uh, far away for pocket equipment. <laughs> But for example, a D300 Pro we will, will be good for the start because already have enough power to shoot sports. Also, often there is a need to take more press shots than in portrait photography. So remember that you will spend some time to set up flashes and carry them. Uh, 
Okay. So why we use splashes in sports? I will show you here two photos. On the right side, we can see a photo where flashes are in use. And on the left side is a photo without any additional light. About the left photo, I can say um, how good or bad it is. It's just normal photo for me. But uh, it's a good example where the flash can make it a lot more interesting. Unfortunately, at that time, I didn't have a flash with me. So we uh, done it in the way you can see it now, like it's final result. Uh, and probably there was also a problem because uh, it's central London location where you can see the tower bridge on the background. So in uh, spots like this, you need a uh, permission for photo shootings. Uh, when you bring your lights, uh, tripod uh, and big white lenses, yeah, uh, on the location like that, uh, for some reason, a lot of security thinks uh, that you're doing uh, 600% commercial shots, and they will ask you to leave the location without permission. But often I am doing my shots just because I have an idea and want to bring it to life, uh, not making any money there, but uh, it's hard to explain this to security guys. Yeah. <laughs> so just keep in mind that uh, flash photography may be banned in popular locations or in general the whole city. As for example, I am now living in Dubai, uh, where I can't use uh, flashes without uh, permissions in the whole city area, yeah, only outside the city. Uh, so yeah, you always probably need to ask <laughs> uh, official permission. Yeah, I can definitely recall now uh, that this was the main reason why uh, we took this left photo without additional lights. And uh, you can see that it's the main problem as well, because background is too bright. Uh, but the athlete is in the shadow, so foreground is too dark. Uh, and this is a disadvantage of this shot, uh, because in those conditions we need to highlight the athlete, or otherwise make it in silhouette, yeah? But I don't want to shoot the silhouette here, yeah. so I need to highlight an athlete using uh, just camera dynamic range. In our days, uh, cameras have fantastic possibilities of dynamic range, where we can work with shadows and highlights a lot. but still it will be really far far away from the from the results uh, where flashes are used so the main reason why i'm using flash is to highlight an athlete yeah and uh, when you see a photo for example you just open it or you know scrolling it through instagram your eye uh, look immediately like clings to one detail and this detail probably will be the brightest and contrast part of the photo. There are just several microseconds when you, your mind will analyze the whole picture. But first, you will look on the one of the most important part of the photo. Yeah. So here the here is the situation when I'm opening this photo on the left side. I'll firstly look on the tower bridge because it's too bright, and only secondly I will look on the athlete. And uh, this is the issue of this photo because my attention needs to be directed on the athlete first, not on the tower bridge. <laughs> uh, if I will add some light on the athlete and we will darken background, that will be the solution for this photo. On the second photo, as example, yeah, uh, the issue is compensated with flashes. So my look directed, directed uh, on the athlete first. Uh, but probably, yeah, uh, here is the second point of interest, uh, and it's the bright sun. Yeah, you can see it. But overall, the sun and the highlighted athlete are complement each other. But uh, the background stays dark and uh, not crushing all the com light composition. Uh, and that's the key when I'm using flash in sports photography. Yeah, so uh, we can also see beautiful clouds in the background on the right photo. So I aimed, I aimed uh, the light on the athlete in the way to highlight this sky. So that's why I'm using flashes in action photography to highlight the main point of interest, the athlete, and make darker all other things. For those who are interested, I will just uh, quickly show now yeah, this light scheme. Uh, there were two rim lights uh, from the each side behind the athlete. Uh, only remember that it's a little bit more difficult to set up light in some action sports uh, because it's harder to predict where exactly athlete will be in midair. We need to set up and aim the light uh, not on a standing model, but on a flying athlete. 
unfortunately, <laughs> he don't have levitation skills and uh, can stand uh, there like levitating uh, in midair and wait while you will do several pressures. Uh, especially if uh, we're using light shapers, like grids, yeah, that makes like more focused. Uh, then probably we will do more pressures to set up all things. Unfortunately, while we're doing this photo on the right side, uh, security guy came and asked, asked us to leave as well. <laughs> so I didn't have enough time to make this photo perfect. But uh, once one, this shot was quite good. And yeah, I can show this shot now, right now, to you guys. So next, let's uh, look at two main shooting scenarios. Uh, it's event photography, like competitions with reportages and stage photography, uh, where all things uh, are going as planned. Uh, the main difference is that in first scenario, we can predict a few things like stunts, positions, and timings. So we need to improvise and to adapt to the environment and what's happening overall. Yeah, uh, This is more difficult because uh, here plays a role your overall photography experience, like how fast you can set up all things, how precisely you can aim the light and predict an athlete mid-air position. Uh, in the second scenario, where all is staged, things are a lot, a lot easier, believe me, because we can do more mistakes, a lot more mistakes. <laughs> we can precisely set up light, uh, cameras and angle, we can move athlete and ask him to perform a trick uh, that uh, will look better. Also, we can experiment and ask athlete uh, to perform trick uh, over again a lot of times uh, if you fail to capture the shot at first time. So here we can spend several hours to take only one shot. Uh, in the most scenarios, it all depends on how much time do you have. If you have a lot of time and a lot of tries, it's a lot easier mi mission. Uh, you will definitely take your final successful uh, shot, but only maybe it will take more attempts. Uh, but of course, uh, if you're shooting reportages, competitions, or events, you don't have rights to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah? Uh, there are rare exceptions when more chances are given to us. Uh, just for example, when we're shooting runners, uh, trail runners, cyclists, uh, as you can see on the left picture, yeah? Uh, because uh, often it's not only one person in these uh, sports, uh, it's a lot of people who are running in the same way, paths and direction. Mm, so all... Uh, so we can do per shot on the first guy and later take the final shot with the second or third one. Uh, yeah, in this situation, first guy is not a winner, sorry, <laughs> because a cool picture will receive, for example, third one. Uh, but in this sports like MTB bikes, skateboarding, parkour, and other extreme stuff, uh, as I said before, we don't have a lot of tries. Uh, the only way to predict the things, uh, for example, before competition, you can talk with athlete and ask uh, what he planning to perform. And that will be a little hint for you. Uh, but if you don't have uh, time, you can shoot in TTL mode or by experience, by your experience, manually adjust all things on the camera and flashes. So basically, I can say that staged photography is about to gain experience, yeah, because you have a lot of tries and time where the event or commercial shootings are about to put this experience into practice, where you already can set up all things fast and take sh a shot with less mistakes. So yeah, probably it will be the key. Yeah, here will be as an example. Well, now explain. I will show you now two good examples here, where the first one is about reportage of trail running. Uh, it was a competition where I didn't have much time, so I needed to set up the light really fast and change location. As you can see on the scheme, uh, there is only one light from the back, just to highlight the athlete and water a little bit. Uh, and athlete is uh, highlighted because of camera's dynamic range, not because of flash, yeah, you, his uh, front, his face. I just quickly attached flash on the branch behind and uh, took a few shots. That's all what I, what I did here. So nothing special here, but still looks good thanks to camera's dynamic range. And now let's take a look on the second photo. 
and uh, it's good example where I had enough time uh, to set everything up. You already saw this photo on previous my uh, streaming, yeah. Uh, here I played with light, done a lot of reshots to see how water and athlete is highlighted, and uh, now you can see uh, on the scheme that I am using a lot of lights. There's key light with softbox, two rim lights, one for the athlete, and the second one for to highlight the water splashes. Uh, water is more beautiful. Athlete were, is well separated from background. Uh, there were done a lot of tries, so definitely this is this one looks better. Uh, it's a good comparison because conditions are the same. Yeah, in both uh, shots, like uh, previous, yeah, and this one. So. Uh, But uh, first photo, the only difference is that first photo is uh, about reportage shootings. Yeah, so I just put flash and run away, took photo, take flash back and run to the another spot. But the second uh, uh, photo is about where all is prepared and we had uh, have a lot of time. So I have a good video footage as example, how I take in pictures in reportages. There are often uh, situations where I can uh, take an assistant uh, with me or ask someone who will help to hold the flash. Uh, you will see now in the video that there is not much time and all the things are done really quickly. I just gave Godex ID 600 Pro monoblock to my friend and climb on the tree there for a good view and angle. So yeah, let's just watch the video now. Uh, Ares, can you please help me to put video on? Yeah, first one. Is this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. perfect. So. It's trail it's running, trail running, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are athletes who are running through these forest trails. So yeah, just climb here on the tree. Yeah, it looks good. Uh... Yeah, it took several shots. My friend is holding... Uh, flash on the top, and yeah, that's all. Uh, so that's how I often shoot reportages, yeah? Maybe if you don't have a friend <laughs> with you, uh, of course you can uh, take tripods. So yeah, let's get back to presentation. Mm -hmm, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, if... Mm -hmm. So yeah, if for some reason you don't don't have tripods or just uh, don't have time to attach flash somewhere, uh, assistant will be a good decision. Yeah, in previous video. And now let's talk about the most important thing: preparation and setup. Uh, many of my lovely athletes <laughs> with whom I'm working knows how many times I can forget something. But thanks, it's happening not in commercial shootings. No, <laughs> only when I just want to bring my own ideas to life, yeah. Uh, there's uh, now a good meme on Instagram, Reels, you know, maybe when someone put off cap from the lens and it's disappearing with words forget. <laughs> Same for me. I can strongly remember how I took battery, but uh, when we will come to the location, uh, it's in mystic way we'll lost somewhere. Batteries, memory cards and caps can often disappear. It's like, yeah, something mystic. <laughs> so need to keep that in mind and always double check all. Uh, also, a good thing is to clean camera sensor, check batteries in transmitter, yeah, uh, check memory cards and take uh, a look on the weather conditions. If there will be rain, you need to take cover for your equipment. So basic things that we always need to remember. Uh, there were often situations when a forecast uh, was showing clean, cloudy skies. No, clean or cloudy, yeah. Uh, but without rain. Uh, but when you are coming to the location, uh, it starts raining. So my suggestion uh, will be download several forecast apps where rain will be precisely predicted. Also, light shapers means more qualitative results, but as well, more time spent, more weight and uh, more power needed. Keep that in mind. And if you will not have enough time, don't take uh, light shapers. Yeah because it just will take you a lot of uh, your own uh, power. 
uh, important thing is to agree with athletes about wearing apparel because dark colors will absorb a lot of light especially made black color yeah even dark gray already absorbs a lot of uh, uh, light so athlete will be highlighted less from the flashes so try to ask him uh, or her her uh, to wear bright colors also you can pick a color to match the composition for example if an athlete uh, will fly in the sky don't choose blue colors uh, white or complementary colors will fit great and of course if there's any additional attributes in the shot need to prepare them as well responsibly yeah uh, let's just watch second video and see how this shot was done uh, what i'm showing you now yeah, here yeah so second video is uh, sure yeah yeah thank you <laughs> So I prepared this chain, prepared this chain. Yeah, and that's how we took this this photo. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to presentation. Okay, perfectly. So the most important part when you're shooting uh, with uh, shooting sports is about simple communications yeah remember that athletes are professional athletes and uh, sportsmen are professionals in many cases athlete will know how to shoot him because he already had a lot of photo sessions with other photographers he knows how his trick uh, looks and when uh, it's better timing for top position so if you're shooting some sports first time don't be shy, shy uh, and just ask athlete uh, what's the perfect moment of his stunt and i am more than sure that uh, he will be happy to tell you everything with all the details also you can show your raw shot on the camera and maybe he will try harder as well uh, to perform his stunt more beautiful also there's a little life hack uh, if you and athlete don't know how stunt looks like on the photo you can film his trick on the smartphone in slow motion mode yeah and later frame by frame watch the stunt on the video and decide from what angle uh, you will shoot and what the top position is just remember that some stunts are easy to perform for an athlete and some absolutely not for example if free, free runner yeah and parkour athlete uh, can do a lot of flips that's good yeah that's perfect you can play with it but uh, appreciate a person and try not to abuse his abilities yeah but also there are some moments when uh, there is not only when there is one shot opportunity. Uh, the stunt is too dangerous, and athlete will not repeat it again. Uh, in these situations, better definitely communicate with an athlete and find uh, out all the details. So, yeah, let's let's talk about a little bit about uh, sports photography. Uh, portraits yeah for me the most main difference uh, between sports portraits and just portraits is that i'm always trying to add some dynamics in that on the left photo we can see raindrops on the right photo broken fragments of a mirror that shows like passive dynamics yeah as well here's another example of athletes uh, shootings on the left i added a little bit of motion blur effect by using long shutter yeah and on the right, we added uh, light rays from the laser. So as uh, you can see, when I'm shooting portraits, uh, especially dynamic sport portraits uh, with uh, athletes, I am trying to highlight the dynamics of the sports uh, the athlete is involved in, involved in, yeah, or overall dynamics. Uh, remember that there's no success without failure. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment with light and camera setup, even if the most doubtful results can be interesting, yeah? So I can take a shot with athlete doing trick and just rotate picture, and uh, it will bring me to the new interesting result. Uh, as you can see on the left example, uh, it uh, looks like someone is falling down, but it's a free runner who performs a front flip from the huge drop. 
uh, I was using a rare shutter, shutter sync settings to achieve this trail effect. So if you will just change flash settings and experiment, uh, it can bring you to some new unique ideas. So yeah, that's it. Uh, be creative and think outside the box. <laughs> that's probably my most uh, number one uh, advice <laughs> in sports photography. Thank you so much, Volodya. Um, I actually have a question. If we can go all the way back um, yeah. uh, uh, to the one, I think w was a page. So before we, um, I think page four, the two scenarios one, the, the one on the right, um, how did you, I, I'm pretty sure you phrased the action with, you know, with the flash, but what's the, you know, what's the dragging? How did you do that? Right, you know, the movement. Uh, or, and what sort of shutter did, speed did, did, did we look at? I'm sure our user will be interested how you um, how you managed to do it. Mm -hmm. the black it's and white one. one. Yeah, that I'm sh showing now on the yeah. PPT presentation. Yeah, yeah. It's just okay. so awesome. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. It's my favorite style uh, of uh, sports photography because uh, uh, I can show the path uh, of athlete, yeah. Uh, but it's kind of sketchy, I will tell you. <laughs> uh, because it's, uh, firstly, it's long shutter, yeah? I was uh, taking shot, uh, this shot on one second uh, long shutter. Uh, so you need to open shutter when uh, athlete is uh, in the frame, starts uh, his trick in the frame, yeah? And uh, hold your trigger in the hand. Uh, and like with trigger, shoot the flashes in midair. So long shutter is for uh, this trail effect, yeah? And the trigger from the flash is for to freeze an athlete. Uh, okay. So how I gain this trail effect? It's because I have a constant light, yeah? I did every Godox flash, not only I did 600 Pro. Every Godox uh, flash has a uh, modular light. You can use it for sure. Just put uh, Godox flashes, yeah, uh, turn on modular light, and it will be a powerful light. The only thing, uh, ask athlete to wear uh, bright apparel, because bright apparel will uh, uh, reflect light, and it uh, will be uh, gain us more stronger result of this trail. Okay. So basically, you're saying that um, the camera needs to be on tripod. The uh, yeah, shutter yeah, speed yeah. needs to be uh, one second. Um, oh, something like that, yeah. One second like, or... So one second. second also like similar somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the dragging or the motion blur is actually done by the modeling lights of AD600. AD600 and AD1200, yeah, as well. AD600 and AD1200. You basically... Yeah. Uh, rather than using the camera to trigger the lights, you're holding the trigger on, at your left hand. Whenever... Yeah, it, it wasn't attached on the camera. Yeah. I just yeah, it's not yeah, a, it's detached yeah. from the camera. When <laughs> um, the athlete is actually in the you know at the right spots, you manually <laughs> flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I think that's so, a great tips. That's a great tips. Oh, that's something you, you need to use. You know? uh, like uh, you need to think. You need to uh, do like twice. Uh, First, uh, uh, like uh, start long shutter, yeah? yeah, and then put trigger, yeah, yeah on. All right, I think that's uh, that's it for us. Uh, Vlodia is a very active uh, action photographer. You can follow him uh, on his Instagram. The Instagram handle is uh, right below him. Um, Thank you again, Vladia, for sharing us with this with, with us this great tips. Thank you. Thank you. And hopefully, nice um, you. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully we will uh, we will get to catch up very soon in the future. Thank you again. Great. Peace, Have guys. A nice day. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Goodbye.